Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. My name is Ariana Kretz. And my name is Daria Clark. And we are the directors and writers of A Day in the Life. We would first like to go over some quick housekeeping rooms. The exits are located to your right and left and behind you. Please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Our show contains content about sexual assault, anxiety, depression, self-harm, drug abuse, and gun violence. If you are sensitive to these topics, please feel free to leave at any time if you become overwhelmed. There are counselors from the Family Services Agency of Burbank here tonight if you feel the need to talk to anyone for help. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the show for anyone who would like to ask the cast about the process of the show and the general topic about mental health. We can take your questions in our question box located in the back by the videographer, and with that, we would like to share with you a bit about, about our experiences writing this show and our own experiences with mental health. When I was in seventh grade, I began to notice that I was a little different from most kids. I started experiencing things such as heart palpitations, difficulty breathing, lightheadedness, dizziness, and nausea, which I knew were not normal things for someone my age to be experiencing. Over time, they continued to get worse. I told my parents, and we began a series of many visits to the doctor. I was tested for a variety of things, such as anemia and diabetes, but the test results came back negative every time. I was terrified, and I convinced myself that I was going to die. Going to school felt like a nightmare, and eventually I could barely make it through first period before I would have to come home. Eventually, I could barely leave my bed. I felt like I was losing complete control of my mind and body, and I was living in a constant state of fear. After speaking with more professionals, we finally found the answer, and I was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. When I was eight years old, I had been bullied for the past two years, but my school insisted on putting my bully and me in the same class for the third year in a row. At 13 years old, I watched my family members struggle with depression and discovered it ran in our family. At 15 years old, I decided I would cut off a relationship because I was not sure how to help anymore. And at 16 years old, three students at our school committed suicide over the course of a semester. Our stories are not unique. The students in this show, the students at our school, the students in this district, the state, the nation all have a story like ours. And that's an important thing. When I started this project with Lori Blake and Family Services Agency, it was extremely hard. During our first meeting, I could not stop sobbing as I explained my experience with mental health. I got home and talked to a friend I had met that summer about how I had been feeling. I was shocked by my own emotions. But when I was explaining that to him, uh, he explained to me how his freshman year, a student from his school, a friend of his, had committed suicide, and certain events still plunge him into that same darkness. We keep our stories about mental health close to our hearts. We hold them isolated in a box to reveal only to the closest of confidants. It seems impossible that people across the world could understand these stories. It seems impossible that people across, these, across the world could have stories that are the mirror images of our own. When I was first diagnosed with my anxiety disorder, I felt very alone because I didn't know anyone else who suffered from it. But as I slowly became more open about it, that completely changed. I began to discover more and more people in my life who had my condition, and it was incredible to finally be able to talk to people who understood exactly what I was feeling. Through this experience, I realized that if we don't talk about mental illness, things are only going to get worse. In our society today, many people are afraid to reach out for help for fear of being judged or of not having their feelings validated. For countless people, myself included, mental illness is a daily battle, and overcoming it takes a type of strength some people will never fully understand. But when we have the support of other people, facing it doesn't seem quite as scary. Our stories of mental health only make sense when they exist in the entangled web that they are meant to be. They only make sense when viewed in the context of other stories. They only make sense when we take responsibility for them and accept what we've gone through and perhaps, one day, embrace and love ourselves for it. We all need to do our part in helping make this world a place where mental illness is not looked down upon as a weakness, but instead is looked at as a sign of great strength. I stand before you today, the daughter of a child psychologist and a licensed counselor, the friend of someone who has anxiety, and I admit that despite these experiences, despite my understanding of mental health, I am still getting it wrong. I have failed friends that have reached out. I pushed them out when I knew that they needed me. A lot of the time, I still don't know how to respond when people talk to me about their experiences with grief, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, or any number of the issues in between. I used to feel guilty about this. I used to feel shameful for my failures. But the thing about shame is that it makes us repress our responsibility for our actions. Shame paralyzes us from moving forward. 
So tonight, I will stand up here and take responsibility for the hurt I've caused, for the stigmatization of mental health that I've perpetuated, for my inappropriate responses and rash decisions. I take responsibility for Daniela and Jade and John. I choose to break the silence and accept the hurt I have caused without fear, without shame, and without doubt. Tonight, we hope that you take responsibility for these things too. And remember, you are not alone in these failures. Tonight, we hope that you listen to the stories on stage and see it not as heartbreaking, but as an opportunity to gain an understanding of what your friends, parents, children, and students face on a daily basis. See it not as something shameful or depressing. Do not look at the road we have traveled and feel woeful for the work ahead. Feel joy, excitement, and pride. Feel freedom and liberation and accepting your flaws and loving yourself for them anyway. Embrace the first step towards a world where the names of those we have lost will not be whispered, but shouted from the rooftops. For, for Daniela and Jade, Jade and John, this is for you. Well, first I would like to say thank you for coming forward. I am sure this has been very difficult for you to carry, and it is very brave of you to speak up about this. Thanks. When someone exhibits the kind of behaviors that you are describing, there's typically a complex reason behind them. I know it may be difficult to understand why someone might engage in such a self-destructive manner, but you have to understand, this is how other people deal with, with emotions they don't otherwise know how to digest. Would you like a pamphlet with more information? Sure. <clears throat> now, when did you first find out about your friend's behavior? Um, well, it wasn't, it wasn't one moment, exactly. I mean, I've known Lydia for a long time, and we've definitely had our ups and downs. I mean, we all do. Something has been really different this past year. And what do you mean by that? Well, Lydia's always been the life of the party. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the shy one. If there were auditions for the musical, she'd go for the lead. If there was a dance, she'd be the first one there. And she was always trying to get me out of my shell. Like, like once she even forced me to go to this crazy roller coaster at the pier, even though I'm like deathly afraid of heights. But now, now it's just difficult to get her to hold a conversation. I've, I've tried everything I can think of to help her, but nothing I do seems to make any difference. So, so this is pretty much the last resort. I see. And how long has this been going on? Since the middle of summer. Hmm. Was there something specific that might have caused all this? No. No, not, not, not that I know of. Okay. Can you tell me about her disclosure to you? What? When and how did she tell you she was struggling with self-harm? We were, we were at my house for the night because her parents were out of town and, and we were just going through the motions and doing everything we normally would do, but as usual, nothing was working. I mean, any chance she got, Lydia would find an excuse to, to, to go to the bathroom or, or check her phone, whatever, as long as it didn't involve talking to me. And the longer the night went on, the more I felt like I was failing her. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be her best friend. I'm supposed to know what to do, yet I've watched Lydia struggle for months and months and months, and I'm sure her other friends and teachers and, and family have too, but for whatever fucking reason, they've decided to ignore it. I'm, I'm sorry. 
I know this is difficult. Whenever you're ready. We were sitting in my room, and I, I, I just forced myself to say, Lydia, are you okay? And she said, what do you mean? And, and I, I said I had noticed that she didn't seem to be very happy lately. And she, and she just completely broke down, sobbing. I have, I have never seen her cry like that. And anyway, that's, that's when she told me. She said, um, she said she didn't feel like she belonged anywhere anymore and that she hated the way she looked and she felt like everything was falling apart and, and she needed something she could control, I guess. I, I didn't understand that. And how long ago was this? This past weekend. Have you told anyone else about this? No. You know, I, I wasn't going to tell anyone at first, but I've been, I've been walking around with this pit in my stomach, and so I, I asked two of my friends what I should do, and they said to come here. So, so here I am. If I'm understanding this correctly, neither your parents nor Lydia's have any idea about this? No. No, they don't. Is that because you or Lydia is in an unsafe home environment? What? No, no, no. Lydia's parents and, and mine are fine. I, I just couldn't tell them. It, it felt too personal. And I, I don't want them to worry. I can handle this. Okay. I understand. Is there anything else you would like to tell me? No. No, no, that's it. At this point, the school will have to contact Lydia's parents to discuss the situation and form a plan to decide how to best move forward with this. In the meantime, please try to stay calm. We will keep you updated as best as we can. Okay. Okay, thank you. Of course. You may go back to class now. <coughs> to class? Yes. Do you need a note for your teacher? No. No, thank you. How have you been, um, have you been feeling since this weekend? Since this weekend? Since this weekend, my life is completely blown apart. Yeah? Stop playing dumb. I know you told them you're the only one that knew about it. I'm sorry, Lydia. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't really have any other choice. You didn't have any other choice? You could have kept your promise. You could have been my friend. Lydia, I, do you have any idea what I've been through in the past 24 hours? My mom won't stop crying. They searched my room top to bottom. Oh my god. You weren't supposed to say anything. I had to, Lydia. I was just so worried about you and I couldn't sit there anymore and do nothing. You don't understand this at all. What? I said you don't understand this at all. God, I asked you for one thing. All I wanted was someone to sit there and listen to me. That's all I wanted. I was worried that you might- That I might what? Kill myself? Blow my head off or swallow some pills? trying to help you. Did I tell you I was going to kill myself? That's not the point. No, did I tell you I was going to kill myself? No. No, but you've been struggling for a really long time, Lydia. And since when did it become up to you to save me? Since when did I ask you? You needed help, Lydia! I needed you! And now you've gone, you've ruined that too. And 
It doesn't matter anyway. Don't let me make the whole thing up. What? What else was I supposed to do, huh? Besides, they don't have any reason to believe you. I don't have any scars, and I always pretend to eat around them. Lenny, are, are you hearing yourself right now? Lydia. Lydia, I'm your best friend. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do this for me. I did it for you, to help you. I love you, Lydia. Fuck you. I wanted to let you know that we did contact Lydia's parents. Yes, sir. I am aware. And unfortunately, they do not want to take action. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, so, so now what do we do? Well, Lydia's parents told us that they do not want Lydia to be involved in any future counseling at the school, and that we are not to call her in for any reason concerning this allegation. Allegation? So they believed her. I'm sorry. They what? believed her. They took her word over mine. I'm afraid I cannot disclose to you any of the opinions you discussed with Lily's parents. So what? You're not going to do anything? Unfortunately, it is now out of our control. This is ridiculous. You did the right thing. It is always better to speak up about issues like this than to stay silent. You could have saved her life. Thanks. Come on, you're killing me, Liam. That's the goal, dude. You cannot have a perfect hand. There's just no way you're a terrible boy. If you say so. Ryan, I think you're trying to rationalize your loss, and that's not healthy. I think it's finally time you move on to acceptance, bud. Okay, rationalizing isn't even a stage of grief. Oh, He's in denial. Oh, shut up. You took one oh, semester. Oh, oh, okay, okay. ladies, <laughs> ladies, please. There's no need to get your panties in a twist, okay? okay? Oh. Whoa, don't put them with us, all right? The girls? We don't want that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Feeling above it all tonight, are we? I think she was just joking, Michael. Oh, there's no need to get politically correct on me. I'm just messing around. She can take it. Right, Julia. All right, all right. I am bored. What's this uh, party I've been hearing about? I don't know where you've been, but there hasn't been one mention of anything other than this damn card game since we got here. And that's just the problem. I agree. We've been stuck in Ben's basement all night. It's depressing. Mm -hmm. Hey, now. Hey. <laughs> don't get down on the basement. What did the basement ever do to you? It killed my sense of smell, dude. <laughs> no, dude. That's Liam's cologne. Whoa! It's called hygiene. Oh. You should try it. I like called? it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, I hear Jessica Collins is having a party a few blocks down from here. Je Jessica? Oh, I'm in. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> What's so special about Jessica? Uh, let's just say she's got a reputation about her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, let's just say she knows how to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's gonna be there? <laughs> a lot of hot ass. Come on, we got, we got Lauren, Derby, Kylie's gonna be there. Oh, okay. oh, no, your girlfriend's right there! Oh, come on, she can take it, right? I'm just messing around here. Well, what are we waiting for, guys? Let's go. All right, come on. Jesus Christ. Can you take Julie up for a second? Liam, can I talk to you? Yeah, sure. Okay, what's up? Liam, tonight's your night. What are you talking about? She's all over you. Take advantage of that. <laughs> tonight? I don't. I don't know if she'd want to. What are you, a pussy, Liam? No, no, we just haven't talked about it yet. So you're going to say a little conversation is going to get in the way? <laughs> no. Of course not. So, uh, 
Tonight? Yeah. Yes. Tonight. Tonight. All right, let's go. Hello, party people! <laughs> God, I should never agree to be friends with you. Hey. Go big or go home. <laughs> wow, this is kind of a crazy party, huh? Do you need to take it, Bert? I have the keys to the car. I know all this can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. But seriously, if you want to get out of here, I can make that happen. No, I'm not here. Let me get your door? Yeah, how gentlemanly of you. You know, I am on the track team. Fastest minutes, six minutes, 20 seconds. You know, I mean, it's not record breaking or whatever, but you know, it's enough, you know, it's fast enough time to get some recognition from, uh, I don't know, Arizona University. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could show you if you wanted. Show me your running? Oh, of course, it'll change your life. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of hoping we could be alone for a bit tonight. Uh, sure. After the party, we can drive around for a bit, you know? No, I actually want to talk to her. Okay. Talk. Well, <laughs> not with all these people around. Okay, is something wrong? You're, <laughs> you're acting weird. What? No, no. Everything's fine, all right? Just give me a minute, okay? All right, all right. So I tell this chick, right, like, I'm not paying $20 for your pressed juice, right? So she starts yelling at me, like, this is a date, and I have dietary restrictions, and this is the only thing I can get here, which, by the way, we all know is a load of bullshit, right? Yeah. Okay. So I look this chick up and down, and I say, listen, whatever dietary restrictions you're on, they are obviously not working. Right. Okay, and you should just skip dinner altogether. You will thank me later, right? Well, uh, that didn't go through well, and then, uh, <laughs> this bitch grabbed the drink, shoved it in my face for the whole restaurant, and stripped it, it's all over the place, it was, it was a mess, yeah, it was You're a mess. Like, I don't, like, press juice. Well, damn right, I wouldn't be paying, uh, 20 bucks for your press juice either, huh? Sorry about it. <laughs> hey, can I talk to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I need to get her... All right. Uh, uh, everybody, everybody, attention, please. Let's go. Check out the pool. Yeah. Come on, yeah. 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 Michael, are you trying to get me naked? <laughs> Who are you texting, babe? Oh, hey, sorry. Um, my mom was texting me, but what's going on? Where's everyone? They all went out to the pool. Oh. Okay, well, we're going to the party. No, it's, it's kind of cold outside. Yeah, um, you're right. Let's, let's just sit down. Oh. What? You look so beautiful tonight. Thank you. You know, I've been thinking, and I'm ready. You're ready? For what? Julia. Come on, don't play dumb. We've been dating for seven months. Wait, hold on, wait. What are you doing? Julia, I love you. You what? I love you. Don't you love me too? Yeah, yeah, I love you too. Well then, don't you trust me? Of course I trust you. Well then, don't worry about no, it. No, hey, please, not tonight, all right, please? Julia, you're going to be fine, all right? Just don't worry about it, just trust me and everything will be all right, okay? I just wanted to say I had a really good time last night. And it looks like you did too. You were kind of all over me. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm not saying I didn't like it. I just... Okay, hey, no. What do you want? 
Whoa, okay, I didn't do anything wrong, all right? You didn't tell me to stop. I was just doing what oh I was supposed God, to do. Oh my God, shut up, just shut up, please. Just shut up, okay? You know what you did. What, hold on, no, I just want to talk, stop, okay? okay? Just, no, Don't do anything no, irrational, no, all right, stop, please. okay? I'm done, all right? I'm, I'm done. Come on, please, just let me. October 24th, 10.15 p.m. Hey, you're Lily, right? I saw your story on the Smiths. They're the best. Hey, I'm guessing from your handle your name is Samuel. I love the Smiths too. Yeah, my dad is a musician, so I've picked up on some stuff. That's so cool. What kind of stuff are you into? Mainly alternative. Kings of Leon, Death Cab for Cutie. I like rock, like U2 and Fleetwood Mac. What school do you go to? Redlands East Valley High School. We're in SoCal. Go Wildcats. Why do so many schools have large cats as their mascots? When I went from middle to high school, I graduated from Puma to Cougar. Is there even a difference? Good question. Probably not, considering how lazy admin is here. Wait, what school do you go to again? Wharton High School, in Florida. Wow, that's far. Good, you know your basic geography. Ha ha, very funny. How'd you even find my account? I know this kid named Damien. I think he went to a summer program with you. Oh yeah, I love Damien, he's the best. If you say so. It's getting late, I should go to bed. Oh, come on, it's only like 10.40 in California. Isn't it almost 2 a.m. in Florida right now? Your point? Don't you have school tomorrow? School, what's that? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to bed. See ya. Good night. October 27, 4.37 p.m. Hey. Hey. What you doing? Homework, <laughs> unfortunately. So early? Do what I do, finish it all the class before. It's because I have rehearsal at six, so I'm trying to get as much done before that. Ah, got it. What about you? Uh, nothing much. Uh, what kind of rehearsal are you going to? I play flute in my school's band. Very rock and roll of you. Shut up. Damn, sorry. Didn't mean to offend you or whatever. Oh, no, sorry, that was a joke. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What do you do besides school? Assassin's Creed. God. <laughs> what? Please don't tell me you're one of those guys who plays video games all day and night. Is there something wrong with that? It's a colossal waste of your time. I have a lot of time to waste. What do you mean? I don't go out much, I guess. What about on the weekends? Don't you hang out with people? Not really. So you just stay at home all day? You know what? Let's stop talking about this. There are plenty of other depressing topics we haven't hit yet, like dead dogs or the war in Yemen. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. It's fine. We've been talking for four days straight. We were bound to get around to it sometime. Yeah, about that. I really gotta finish this homework. I'm sorry, I'll talk to you later. I get it. Don't be sorry. Talk to you later. Okay. October 29th, 304 p.m. Hey, how you doing? Okay, you? Pretty good. What have you been up to? I'm sorry I didn't text you yesterday. My mom took my phone away. Oh, no worries. 
been up to anything interesting? I guess you could say that. Oh, come on, I want to hear it. Lily, this isn't fun news or whatever. Oh, are you okay? I don't want to freak you out or anything, but something happened with my family. What is it? I can handle it. My mom's moving out. What? Yeah, her and my dad have been fighting a lot recently, and I guess she just decided it was time. That's awful. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Why didn't you tell me? I guess I just wanted somebody outside of it all, but at least for a little while, it's stupid. I don't think it's stupid. Thanks. Is there anything I can do? All the way in California? Yeah, you're right. Honestly, I don't know what else to say. That's okay. You know what? <laughs> I should go. Uh, my dad's trying to get me to help with dinner. He's not exactly a master chef. Okay. Text me if you need anything. Like, anything at all. Thank you. That means a lot to me. October 30th, 11.11 p.m. Hey, what's up? Same. Homework, rehearsal, school, repeat. Jeez, don't you schedule fun into your life? Well, you're fun. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Me and my friends like to go roller skating on the weekends. Roller skating? Yeah, it's the best. Last time, this woman fell on her ass and they had to call an ambulance to get her out of there. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah, and the time before that, I found some weed I put in the storage locker I put my shoes into. Did you take it? No, of course not. Damn, missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you smoke? <laughs> well, to cope in Florida, you kind of have to. <laughs> That's all you do though, right? Yeah, sure, we'll leave it at that. Hmm. Okay, then. I should probably go do the rest of my homework. All right, bye. <coughs> November 7th, 11.40 p.m. Hey, stranger. Hello? Lily? Hey, sorry, I've been super busy lately. Yeah. I can see that. What do you mean? On your story, you're always with your friends. Oh, I, I guess I've just been going out more now that the band show's over. Okay. What, is something wrong? No, I just thought we were getting close or whatever. We are. But you haven't talked to me in over a week. I'm sorry, I just said other things going on. And I haven't? After everything I've told you about my family, I thought you'd get that. You're right. I'm sorry. The distance makes me forget about all this. Yeah. Whatever. I'm sorry. I do care about you. It's fine. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. What's your favorite color? That was random. Well. Close friends gotta know these things about each other. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing you. Uh, I guess my favorite color is... Light gray. Light gray? <laughs> I think that's a shade, not a color. Shut <laughs> up. It's my favorite shade then, smartass. Uh, uh. What about you? I really like green. Like the color of a pine tree. Your eyes are that color. How do you know what color my eyes are? Uh... Has someone been stalking my Instagram? I was just bored one day and thought I'd look. Sure. Actually, something smells like it's burning. I should go. Yeah, you're fried. Bye. <laughs> November 12th, 8.42 p.m. Lily, are you there? I need to talk to you. Yeah, what's up? 
It's been over two weeks now, and I haven't heard back from my mom. I know, but we've talked about this. She'll call you when she's ready. You just, you just gotta give her time. <laughs> yeah, that strategy really isn't working for me anymore. Uh, well, what do you want to do? I, I think I need to talk to her. Okay, if it's bothering you this much, I think you're right. It's time. What do I even say? I don't know, maybe just, hey mom, I've been really worried about you. Where are you? Okay. Yeah, I'll try that. Done. Good. Do you feel okay? My heart's gonna beat out of my chest, but other than that, yeah, I'm fantastic. Let's talk about something else. Get your mind off of it. How's Assassin's Creed? Make it past the level you were trying to beat yet? Where'd you go? Sorry, I, uh, I got a text back from my mom's number. Crap, that's faster than I expected. Yeah, me too. Well, what did she say? It, it wasn't her, exactly. The message just says that the number I'm trying to reach has been discontinued. What the heck? I guess she changed her number without telling us. Oh my god. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? I get that she hates my dad. I get that they were fighting a lot, but screw that. She's my mom. I'm her kid. She just discontinued her number like none of that mattered. Like none of it happened. She doesn't care about anyone but herself. I'm done. Fuck her! I'm so sorry. She's terrible. You did nothing to deserve this. Yeah. I know that. Right. Sorry. Crap. No. I'm sorry. I, I should go. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? It's it's gonna be all right. I, I promise. I, I'm I'm here if you need me. November thirteenth, three fifteen p.m. Hey, are you okay? Sam, are you there? Sam? November 14th, 1.02 a.m. Sam, please answer me. I'm really worried about you. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. What's going on? Are you okay? No. Did you try talking to your dad? I think you should. It wouldn't matter. He doesn't care about me anymore either. That's not true at all. Lily, he literally hasn't said a word to me since she left. Unless it was absolutely necessary. He's probably just upset too. If he cared at all, he'd be taking care of his kid. I've had to take care of all the grocery shopping, the bills, and everything. While he just sits in front of the TV. He's creeping. And I'm not? What can I do? Can I can I send you some cash to help cover the bills? No. No, it's it's fine. Well, I have to do something. Lily, you know you're all the way in California. There's nothing you can do. Are there any friends nearby that can help you? You've been over this too. I don't have friends here. God, I'm so sorry. I wish I could be there with you. Yeah, me too. Stay strong, okay? Yeah. Sure. November 15th, 11.03 p.m. Hey Sam, how are you doing? I wanted to check in on you. Pretty terrible. What's been happening? There's nothing here for me anymore. My mom's gone, my dad's basically gone. I've got no friends here. And you're all the way in California. Stop that. It's just bad right now. You'll get through it. No, I won't. As long as I'm here, it's just going to keep getting worse. Let me help you. You're not listening to me. There's nothing anyone can do anymore. I just got to get out. No, 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 no. That, that's not safe. You, you can't just go off on your own. I'm serious. I can help you. Just, just give me your phone number and we can talk this out. Sam?
Don't worry about me anymore. You've done enough for me. Thanks for everything. No, stop, don't leave me like this. Sam? Sam, please answer me right now. Sam! We're sorry, but the account you are trying to reach has been deleted. Goodbye. So like I was saying, I totally think I got that test. I definitely got that test. None of that was stuff we went over. I know. Let's not even start with that. Don't I'm... you think that was hard? I thought that was I so thought it was hard. so hard. I... Ridiculous. I, I mean, she never even talked about it. Honestly, so much senior life. Do you want to study? Do you ever? Uh, yeah. Yeah, studying's great. <laughs> Sounds good. Just remember, you have a therapy appointment at 7, so just manage your time. Right. Oh, I wanted to talk to you about something else. Uh, I know recently your anxiety has been getting worse. Uh, so I was thinking maybe this time you could try having a panic attack during the appointment. That way, <laughs> that way Susan could sort of help you through it and maybe give you tip, tips what? or tricks on... I was just thinking maybe it Mom. could... Mom! That's not how it works. Not at all. I can't control when I have an attack. It just happens. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about that? I, I just thought it could help her understand how it makes you she feel. She can't understand how I feel! And do you know why? Because she doesn't have an anxiety disorder, Mom. And you can't understand it either. I know how it's like to feel nervous, honey. Nervous? Mom, having an anxiety disorder is not just feeling nervous. Do you know what it's like to collapse? Crying and shaking and struggling to breathe for no apparent reason? Do you know how horrible that is? Do you know what it's like to have to lead in the middle of class because you feel like you're about to pass out from hyperventilating? Do you know what it's like to feel trapped even if you're not? I, I mean, Mom, I can't even go to most social events without wanting to shut myself in a room just so I can calm down from how overwhelmed I am. That's what anxiety is like. And I don't expect you to fully understand how I feel. But please don't pretend like it's something I can control. Because it's not. the store. Are you guys okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'll be back in an hour or so. Hey, are you okay? 
okay. Yeah, I'm fine. No, you're not. I know you. <coughs> it's getting really bad again. And I hate admitting it, but I think you should. The anxiety? Yeah, I did sort of notice something was a little off at lunch today. I'm really sorry, Riley. You shouldn't have to deal with this. Thanks, but there's nothing I can do about it. It, it feels like it controls everything I do. I know it feels like that right now, but, but it seems like it comes in waves, and, and right now it's just reached a high point. Yeah. It's just so frustrating. I mean, it's been almost four years since I was diagnosed, and I still feel awful most of the time. Isn't it supposed to get better and not worse? But you are better. Look, I've seen how much you've struggled over the past couple of years, but I've also seen how much stronger you've gotten. I guess so, it's just hard for me to see it. Trust me, you're a lot stronger than you think. <coughs> Can I ask you something? Of course, anything. Do you think it scares people away? Me being like this? I mean, maybe that's just a stupid question, no, but no. No, Riley, people love you for who you are. And having an anxiety disorder is not going to change that. Okay? Thanks. I guess just sometimes I worry people think I'm too much to handle. Well, if anyone thinks that, then they're stupid. And they're not really your friend. Besides, I'm always going to be here. I'm not going anywhere. You know I can always talk to you about this. It's just sometimes I feel like it's better to keep things to myself. Because you're uncomfortable talking about it? No, more just because I don't want people to think I'm too much to deal with. I don't want to ruin my friendships or anything like that. Riley, our friendship is more important to me than you could ever imagine. And there is no way your anxiety could ever ruin that. Promise? There's something else I was wondering. Sure, anything. Is it super obvious when I'm feeling anxious? I feel like somehow you always know. Well, maybe it's just because I know you so well, but I usually can tell when something's a little off. Like, when you're anxious, you tend to get pretty quiet, and if we're around a lot of other people, you don't participate in things as much. Yeah, I've noticed that about myself too. When that happens, I get in my head a lot, so it's hard for me to focus on what's happening around me. Got it. Um, also, uh, when you're anxious in class, you tend to fidget with stuff, like your pens. Yeah, school's been really difficult, actually. I. I feel sort of trapped when I'm in a classroom, which I know probably sounds stupid, but it's, it's really scary. I can't focus on anything else but just wanting to get out. And I've had to leave class a few times in the past. I'm really sorry, Riley. I had no idea. Is there anything I can do? Actually, just the fact that you know makes me feel more comfortable. Good. I'm glad. Um, hey, is everything okay with you and your mom? I totally understand if you don't want to talk about it, but um, something just seemed a little weird. Yeah, she just, she said something earlier. 
she said that I might, if I just had a panic attack with my therapist, that maybe we'd have some sort of breakthrough or something. But she doesn't realize it's not something I can just magically conjure up whenever I feel like it. I'm sorry. I think maybe it's just difficult for her to understand since she doesn't experience it. Yeah, I guess so. Sometimes I feel like I'm never going to get better. I mean, is this my life now? Am I going to be no, like this forever? No. Riley, it's going to get better. I promise you. Look, I, I can't tell you when, but I promise you that it will. And I'm going to be here for you, no matter what. Nice this round. <clears throat> More points that way. Get a couple shots in first. Three. Hey yo, there's a door in the hallway to your left. Go open it. Hey man, you doing okay? No, no, yeah, yeah, I'm good. You sure? Because this isn't going well for us here. <laughs> Let's just play the game. Yeah. All right, sure. Nice rep? Yeah. Could you get that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, so, like I was saying, to find the slope of a tangent line at a specific point, you have to plug in the derivative and take the function and plug in the given point. Does that make sense? I'm not really sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, no need to be sorry. So, you're going to take the derivative, like this, and then when you graph it, it's gonna look like this. Okay. And so then you're gonna take this x value, mm. and then you're gonna be finding this point right here. Oh, uh, okay, okay, I got it now, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Hey, yo, Jacob, come on, focus. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just feeling a lot of it tonight. Okay, dude, something's going on here. <laughs> um, I don't think you'll get it. Dude, we've been friends since like fourth grade. I'll get, I'll get whatever. Is it your parents? Uh, no. School? Workload's been rough lately. No, no, it is nothing like that. Is it a girl? Um. It is a girl! Okay, dude, you gotta tell me. <laughs> you gotta I'm tell sorry. me, dude, if it's a girl! I haven't been with a girl I'm since Danielle and Ryan! Don't touch me! Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you just, you snuck up on me like that. I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, how about I go get us something to eat? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what you've got here. Yeah, that one was a little weird, but. Okay. We'll You got them all right, though. <laughs> well, you're a good teacher, so. Thank you. Uh, um, um, my parents are going to be home any second. It's probably not. No, they won't. I'm paid for the hour. Uh, <laughs> but they're going to see that I didn't do my work, and they'll know something. You don't have to worry about it, OK? I'll do it for you, uh, and I'll just send you the answers. Uh, uh, look, I, I'm sorry. You're pretty and all, but. But what? No, what? Seriously, are you gay or something? What? No, not at all. Well, do you have a girlfriend? Um, 
No, but... Okay, then I'm having trouble seeing what the problem is here. Uh, look, I, I'm sorry. I, I just can't, I can't do this. Um, you locked this? I think you need to come sit down. Okay, no, I gotta go now. Thank you. But is anyone else home like your mom I or anybody else? Okay, please don't out. do that. Fuck! Uh, do you see what you did here? Uh, and there's definitely gonna be some bad bruising too. I I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You just kind of snuck up on me like that. Would you just sit down already? Listen, this can go one of two ways, okay? Either you can leave now and I'll tell everyone what you just did. You could claim self-defense, but who's gonna believe that you needed to defend yourself from a girl you've got nearly half a foot on? Or you could just relax <clears throat> and just let me take it from here. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, I overreacted. It's okay. I've already forgotten about it. Hey, I'll take him! Hey, I brought some burritos. Hey. Here's what I'm thinking. You keep zoning out, because Black Ops 3's getting old. I get it. So I grabbed Black Ops 4 from Alex's room. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Let's, let's do that. All right, back in action. Use knives, remember? <clears throat> hey, you got enough for that door on your left? Left. On, on. Other left. Dude, okay. <laughs> I don't mean to be pushy here, but something's going on. No, uh... No, you're, you're right. Um, something, uh... Happened. Yeah? Yeah. Um... I was with Tamara. Your top tutor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um... Everything was good. Or at least as good as, um... Derivatives can be. But then she kissed me. <clears throat> and I don't know. I, I just couldn't do it, I guess. Um, when I pulled away, she had this horrible look on her face, like, who the hell are you to say no? I mean, she's right. She's this gorgeous college girl, and I'm just this, what, junior failing out of health? But it, it just felt wrong. I, I, I tried to get out, and, and then she, she cornered me. And I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get her to stop. I'm 5'11". I'm 160 pounds, and I couldn't get her to stop. Jesus. Hey, hey man. I'm sorry you feel that way, dude. I really am. But I think you're looking at this the wrong way. Okay, okay, Tamara. She's this beautiful college girl. She's crazy smart, and she chose you, dude. She chose you. I think you're just psyching yourself out here. You think that because you don't deserve her, she's out of your league. And you think that that's why things felt wrong, dude. That's why things felt wrong, man. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could have stopped her. She must have, what, half a foot on you? Yeah. See, this is all just a big misunderstanding, dude. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, I guess. You're gonna be fine. So how was it, really? Ah, I can't believe you fucked Tamara. Me neither.
We are here in Florida where a dark and troubling portrait has now emerged about the horror that played out here earlier today. You can see the massive presence here still behind me. Authorities are still here on the scene of this school. The buildings from that large campus are right behind those trucks behind us where children piled into closets, hiding in silence, texting their parents. So many of the students told me today that they told their parents they thought they were going to die. Tonight, we see shocking new footage of these kids crying as their wounded classmates are carried out by police, then escaping the building themselves. We have been told that the suspect tried to blend in with the students, dropping the AR-15, then leaving the school. And for the first time, we are seeing the faces of the victims, 15 of them students, two of them hero teachers. about school, but other than that, I'm good. People seem kind of weird today. Do you know something's up? Yeah. Didn't you hear about what happened yesterday? No. What? There was a school shooting in Florida. 17 people were killed. Whoa. Really? That, that's insane. I know. I found out last night. I was just so shocked, you know? I can't wrap my head around why someone would do something like that. I know. It's completely messed up. But it just keeps happening. I feel like I hear about a shooting in the news practically every single day. Yeah, well, they shouldn't keep happening. This is seriously getting out of hand. I know. It's really upsetting. And this is one of the worst ones yet. I mean, 17 victims? I, I can't even imagine what that school must be feeling right now. I can't either. It just makes me angry, you know? Me too. I think what's bothering me the most is that they were just teenagers. Like us, they had so much potential, so much life ahead of them. And it was all just taken away in a second. I know. I, I wish we could just make it all stop happening. I do too, but how? I mean, where do you even start with something like this? I don't know. I guess better security? Oh, I heard people talking about army teachers and putting armed guards around the school, but I don't feel too great about that. Yeah, I've been hearing that too. I don't like it at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would be more paranoid knowing that there was a gun in my classroom, <laughs> even if it is only meant to be used for protection. Yeah, I probably feel the same way. I think it's kind of stupid to deliberately put guns around school when gun violence is the exact thing we're trying to prevent. <laughs> Besides. Can you imagine old Mrs. Stewart carrying a gun around class? <laughs> no way, stop. That's almost too weird a picture. Something, something that really scares me is that it's not just schools. It's everywhere. Movie theaters, concerts, restaurants, and it's all over the country, too. It, it's making me start to feel like nowhere I go is safe anymore. Wow. I didn't realize it was bothering you that much. But the way I see it as, it's not gonna do us any good to be constantly thinking about it. I think the best thing to do is just live our lives how we normally would and hope that everything will be okay. You're right, and most of the time, I don't think about it too much, but there are definitely times where I can't help thinking that something might happen. Like, when I go to see a movie with a friend, even though I'm having fun, there's still this small part of my brain that keeps thinking about what would happen if there was a shooting. Sometimes, in my head, I run through everything I would do if a shooter came. 
Like, if I was at the movies, I would run to the exit, low to the ground. If I couldn't get to the exit, I'd hide under the seats of the theater, straight on my back. If the shooter came up to me, well, I'd start telling him personal facts about myself so that he'd be more sympathetic. I saw that on Oprah once. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe think I'm crazy, but really, I'm so terrified. You're not crazy, Charity. I've definitely been thinking about things too. Maybe not as much as you have, but it still scares me. I think what scares me the most is that if something were to happen to me, I wouldn't be able to see my friends or family again. Sometimes when I say goodbye to my mom, I try to remember everything exactly. What she says, what she wears, where we are. That way, if something were to happen to one of us, I have that one last memory of her. So, no, you're not crazy. I guess it's just on people's mind now a lot nowadays. Thank you, um, really. on your essays for today, uh, because due to recent events, the school administrators have requested that all the teachers address an issue. Now, as some of you may know, yesterday there was a very deadly shooting at a high school in Parkland, Florida. While we never want to think that something like that might happen to us, it is always a possibility, and we need to take every precaution that we can to ensure that no one is harmed. With that being said, I have made the decision to start locking our door while class is in session, and I've done so already today. I know some teachers have talked about this issue already, so does anyone know what might be the first thing we should do if we were ever put in a lockdown situation? Emerson. Um, I would say barricading the door somehow. Maybe with the chairs would be a good thing to do. Exactly. By making the room as difficult to get into as possible, we would decrease the probability that a shooter would continue to try to gain access to it. Anyone else? We should turn off all the lights, and everyone should sit against the wall. That's also correct. We would want to make sure everyone sits away from the windows <coughs> and out of view as much as possible. Uh, yes? I was just wondering, have the administrators been taking any actions to make our school safer, or prevent a shooting from happening? Well, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. As a teacher, I don't know everything they have been discussing, but I do know that they support the idea of us keeping our classroom door locked. Uh, I know that there are a lot of, you know, different ideas on that. Uh, I would actually, oh, yes? Um, do you support the idea of allowing teachers to have guns in their classrooms for protection? Uh, that one's a little more difficult for me to answer. I don't think that I personally would feel very comfortable having a gun in my classroom, but I can't speak for all teachers. Um, I know, like before, that there are a lot of different opinions on that issue. I would actually like to hear your thoughts on it, if you would be willing. Yeah, um, Charity and I were actually talking about this earlier, and we both agreed on that we would actually feel less safe if there was a gun in the classroom. I know that in an emergency situation, it could be very helpful, but I don't know. The idea of putting guns on campus seemed very counterintuitive to us, if that makes sense. I see. I can definitely understand why you'd feel that way. Charity, you agree with this? Yes, I agree with what Emerson said. I feel like if there was a gun in my classroom, mm -hmm. it would be really difficult for me to not focus on it. I feel like I'd be thinking about it constantly. I can definitely understand that, too. Okay, it looks like we have just about a minute left, so I, I want you all to understand that all of this is not intended to scare you. The school simply wants to make sure that we are all as prepared as we can be, should a shooting happen. Um, oh, okay, um, there's no homework for today, just be prepared to come to class tomorrow, ready to work on your essays.
yesterday, most of you were able to uh, write your introduction and thesis and find a few good quotes to support your thesis. Make sure you finish as much as you can today in order for you to be on time to meet tomorrow's deadline. I would suggest having a plan as to... Okay, everyone, I assume this is most likely a drill, but please do everything you would do in a real lockdown situation. The door's already locked, so I'm going to turn the lights off. After I've done that, please make a barricade to the best of your ability with the chairs. Everyone else, please get behind my desk. How do you know this is just a drill? But Charity, I'm sure everything is fine. No, please tell me, how do you know? Charity, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I need you and Emerson to sit down. So you weren't told there was going to be a drill today? Charity, stop. I haven't heard anything. No, all the more reason for you to sit down and be quiet. Are we going to die? Charity, come on, we need to sit down. I need to text my mom. Charity, are you crazy? You can't go over there. I need to text her. I need to tell her what's happening and that I love her. Charity, no! Charity! Ah! It is way too loud in this classroom. Okay, if this weren't a drill, you would all be dead. <laughs> See that. Look, we'll just order out, it'll be fine. No, we can't do that, Casey. I just got off of my third shift at the diner, and it's barely gonna be enough to buy groceries for the week. You're making this a bigger deal than it actually is. We'll order out, it'll be fine. Casey! Dad away. You're the one who would have stopped screaming and nagging all the time. He's gone. We've lost him. It's your fault. The craziest part of it is nothing's really changed. You're still the same old bitch. You just found someone new to blame. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. What is that? Nothing, nothing. It's just something that they're gonna get. Oxycontin, Casey? Really? How much did this cost you? This could have been a month's rent, Casey. That's seriously the question you wanted to be asking me? No. Are you okay, Casey? Do you need help, Casey? No. Why are you taking Oxy, Casey? No, I love you. I can barely look at you. Do you know how selfish you are? I work my ass off for you day and night, and this is how you repay me. We could have used this money, Casey. Screw <laughs> you.
so bright. So fragile. Warm. Hello? Hello? Is anybody here? Hello? I guess it's just me and you. Right. Fragile. What do you think we are? Outer space? No stars, you're right. No stars. Alaska during the winter time, it's cold. It's dark. It's cold. It's dark. Huh? Stronger than an ox. Casey, can you hear me? Mom, what are you doing here? We're here. Casey, come out. How? Oh, tell, tell me. How? Oh. Come on, Casey, you're stronger than this. I'm, I'm trying my best. All I have is this lousy candle. Don't let your flame go out, okay? It's all you've got. Okay. I'll keep that. No. What? What now? Remember. Remember? Remember what? Remember me, Casey. Remember what matters. <clears throat> yeah. You're right. Mom. Mom. Where are you? Mom. Put you in the shower, you wouldn't wake up. No, mom, mom, I'm so sorry. It was, it was just a bad day. It was just a bad day. I, I have a handle on it. I, I swear, it was just, it was a bad day. Casey, I can't take you to the hospital when this happens. Okay? They'll take one look at me and my record, and they'll take you away from me, and that'll be it. And you could have died. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. It was Dad's birthday today. Yeah, I know. Casey, when I got pregnant with you, I was so young. So was your father. We had nothing, and he didn't know what it would take to be a father. I know you love him, and I wanted to keep it that way for you, but the truth is he treated me like shit. He just, he wasn't meant to be a father. You're wrong, you're lying. There was this one day where I had to go to work and your dad was watching you. I came home that night and the front door was wide open and there you were. Sitting in the middle of the living room looking completely lost. You were two. You came home that night high on God knows what and just started screaming at me saying that it was my fault that things between us had gotten so bad and that he had to be high just to be around me. I couldn't take it anymore. So I made him leave. And that was the last time I ever saw him. And besides those letters he writes you, I haven't heard from him at all. That was the worst night of my life. And I just hoped and prayed that something, anything would get better. And then you got into my bed and you crawled into my arms. And I just, I just looked at your beautiful, precious face and I just started to cry. And that was when I promised that I would never let anything hurt you. And 
I failed at that. No, you haven't. Mom, I had no idea. What do we do now? All that matters is that we get you better, okay? We can get through this. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Casey. and I couldn't be more thankful to have as a part of this production. Uh, Guy Myers. <laughs> you know, um, and when I came to him about this idea at first, he just immediately was like, oh, I have too much to do, I can't do this too. <laughs> but he came back to me and said, and you know, apologized and said, you know what, yes, you can do it, I believe in you, and that means the world to both of us. She's my Girl Scout troop leader. Thank you so much. Girl Scout codes and everything we had to go through to put this on and get that poster approved. Um, and, and finally, thank you so much to Lori Black and all the Family Services Agency who was very generous with donating um, funds for this project and has been with us every step of the way. on to a quick panelist discussion. So if, some, if the representative from Family Services Agency can come up to the stage and the actors who are going to be a part of the panel can stay on stage, the rest of you are welcome to go to the audience or go backstage. <laughs> 